It's Friday, June 16th. What are you wearing right now, Aaron? Oh, this is a weighted vest, yeah. I reckon it kind of looks like a weighted vest. <laughs> ah, you put these things on when you well, you're not as hefty as you want to be. You're not putting this online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Why are you walking with a weighted vest? Because in Soviet Russia, you wear a vest to be like bear, right? No, I don't know, like uh, uh, extra calories burned uh, without having to jog. I don't want to jog. Mm. I don't like running. So it's a supplement to your... Yeah, it's a supplement to the lifting. Like, actually, okay, so... Secrets revealed if you... Alright, we're finally serious now. If, if you read that stuff that Wendler put out there, uh, it'll tell you, like, in the 531, it's one of the few things he recommends to, like, help with endurance mm. and stuff like that. And I will say, it's one of the few things that really um, makes me have to work on my breathing, because you have to kind of work on your breathing, and it really also kills, like, your... Your, uh, you know, traps Upper and yeah, rhomboids, yeah. all that kind of jazz. And, um, and it really kind of mimics for me, like, uh, the suffering I feel when I'm gassed and I'm rolling mm. with people, right? Like, because it's hard to suck in air. It's hard to breathe. Yeah. And so this kind of makes my, me work, right, with, at, at a slow metered pace, which is kind of like I, how I feel you want to be when you're, when you're rolling for an extended period of time, so... So yeah, that's why that's why I do it. I feel like it's uh How much is that? How, how much weight? This is what well, was that 50 there. And you added four, probably like 10 more 20. pounds, right? No, each one of those things was four. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So that's like 60, about 70 pounds 70 now. Pounds? Yeah, it's like 70 pounds now, I think something like that. 70 pounds. It's not bad. I mean, I mean, it's going to get bad way over there and on the way back. But as a like... Initially, it's not bad. Like I wouldn't recommend recommend starting off like that. Like when we were doing this a long time ago, uh, we started like at 20 pounds or 30 pounds. Yeah, we worked out. Yes, right there. See, when I make tension, then I release the tension and I go over. Get good. Put the blade blade of the wrist right there. Choke. He doesn't tap. If he tries to go on top, here bridge over. Bridge, bridge over. Right here, put your, put your, yes, right there. Underneath him, good. Now grab the sleeve, yes, now grab the belt, now dive underneath. Yes, space, good. What's up, YouTube? Sunday, June 18th. Better <laughs> Just finished some rolling. Um, Aaron doesn't know that I don't edit any of this stuff out. So. Uh, sorry. <laughs> We're gonna do some knit work. And then maybe it's inspiring. Uh, <laughs> or not. Or not. I don't know. Cool. Two. Right. 
What's up YouTube, Monday June 19th. So we were asked about details on the Ekyu or the Okinawan ore. Whenever you're holding something like a long pole, just treat it like a stick, right? Um, simply put, you whack things with it. <laughs> so if you want to get more detailed with it, it's uh, what type of, how long is the stick and what's attached to the end or is it bladed or not, right? So for example, nunchakus. So these, you just use it like the screaming stick or something, right? If you wanted to add some length to it, they have this this whatever cord or chain in, in between, and then you add another another type of what foot and a half. But if you hold it like this, you're just using it like a regular stick, right? So then, if you understand that, you can cross study other styles and see how they use different different sticks instead of just trying to stay within the realm of traditional karate, right? So the longer the stick becomes, the easier that move becomes because you have more momentum to whip the, the stick around. For example, one of these things, you call it like a one prong sai or a jute, jute, but it's the same idea. You can use it to, to whack things. And since it's longer, you have more, more force behind the, the strike. Regular sai, same thing. You can flip it out, you can block with it and you could still do whips with it as well, right? Going to the tongfa, you have the same thing. If I hold it like this, I get to swip, pivot it around, but if I flip it, I get how I have one of these, right? So it's the same, same motion. As we get longer, we get to things that you can hold with two hands. So now instead of just doing one arm swings, you can assist with, with two hands. So you can use this as a baseball bat, as what it's made for. Or you can use it like a sword, right? Like a like a bowkin. It's the same movement, same movement patterns. As you get longer to things like the Joe, it's kind of like longer than a sword but shorter than a bow staff. Then you could actually block two-handed. You can counter. You can do stuff like that as well. Poke with it. So on and so forth, right? So the longer the stick, the more options you have. Now instead of just moving it here, you have double-ended strikes. Strike with this side. Strike with this side block here, strike, strike. You, you now get to poke more for a longer distance. You get to do other things with it as well. So now if you had something at the end, um, I don't have a naginata, but imagine a blade at the end. Now you use it for real long distance and you could really just slice things up from here, right? Keeping things away. So for an Ekyu, the cool thing about an Ekyu it's, it has all of those. So not only can you use both ends, you also can slice, you can also poke, and you also can block with a larger surface area. Rather than trying to block block something down here, you can actually use the flat end of the EQ to block things with, right? You can slice more with it, or you can whack more with it to scoop things. You actually have more incentive to poke things with it now, since it's sharp at the end as well. Historically, people say that uh, people scooped up sand like that as well, which is also a possibility. Um, other than that, all the movements are the same. I mean, it's you're holding a stick in your hands. How long is the stick and what's attached to the, to the end, right? One thing I do want to mention with any long stick is the way you grip, right? So if you're trying to push something downward, it would make sense to maybe switch switch a grip down so that both palms are facing downward because if you if something hits right here this might flip up right same thing with um, pushing downward this way it allows me to put my body weight behind things and really attach this this stick to my arm to my waist so that I can actually push down with it right rather than trying to hit something down like that because something's gonna might get flipped up Things like that, even the reason why people push up like this. Um, on the other hand, if you're pushing up with one up, one down, you could see why that's more of a uh, redirection rather than taking a blunt force. I would want to take a blunt force like this. I would want to block and counter with this, right? Because it uh, allows me to swivel. If I do this, I can't really do stuff like that. It's not very powerful, but if I'm here, I'm able to block and strike, block and strike, right? So learning how to switch your grips and also the distance between your grips, right? Because if I want 
more length with my EQ then I would slide everything back to here and use it like the baseball bat that I was showing you right so you're able to to swing this through if I'm trying to reinforce a block I might need to slide it back block and then poke it back out right so if I want to do figure eights I would want my my hands pretty close together however if I'm striking with a figure eight most likely I want them far away that way I can actually put my body with in it right if I want to push something down, I might push something down like that. That way, it's kind of like doing a downward block, right? So the cool thing about weapons is that it really translates to unarmed combat. All the chains in the link have to be in line so that you can move this thing uh, with coordination and accurately. And also, it forces you to generate more power than if you weren't carrying something in your hands, right? Um, it's hard for me to use my hips if I'm if I'm uh, working with the heavy bow, right? So then it forces you to use your hips more. And then once you take the bow away, your your hips are going to be a lot faster without when you're empty-handed, right?